We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Welcome to the panel discussion entitled Cyber Securities of the Future, organized by the Ministry of Development Funds and Regional Policy. My name is Isabella Albrecht. I'm a chair of the program committee of CyberSec Forum. Uh, I'm also with the Council for Digit Digitization in the Prime Minister Chancellery of Poland. Uh, as well as uh, I'm a member of the executive board of Digital Europe and advisory um, group for emerging and disruptive technologies in NATO. And exactly like my portfolio, the topic uh, which we'll be discussing today um, uh, has so many dimensions. So cyber, civil, military. Um, and I'm really glad that I can moderate this uh, panel discussion. I would like to welcome my panelists. Uh, happily, majority of them is here on site and thanks to the, the internet, some of them from different parts of the world could also join us online. Welcome on stage, Ms. Małgorzata jerosińska jedynak Secretary of State in the Ministry of Development Funds and Regional Policy. Madam Minister oversees the implementation of the European Social Fund and the implementation of the Accessibility Plus program. She's also the government plenipotentiary for the preparation of the World Urban Forum in Katowice in 2022. Previously, she was the Minister of Development Funds and Regional Policy. Welcome. Uh, Mr. Maciej Stachura, uh, Katowice City Secretary. Since 2014, he has been associated with the Katowice City Hall he has been involved in the NGO sector, implemented edu educational projects for youth uh, and students. Uh, Mr. Kamil Wyszkowski, Executive Director of the UN Global Compact Network Poland, UN and EU uh, policy experts, in particular in the field of business and administration cooperation, as well as mobilization of the private sector to implement the UN development goals and standards. Uh, Mr. Andrew Roberts, a cyber security specialist, in Smart City Center of Excellence, Tallinn University of Technology. He is focusing on cybersecurity experimentation and testing of autonomous vehicle shuttles. Ms. Katarzyna Smentek, um, Young Council of World uh, Urban Forum. Uh, 11th edition. Uh, she actively works to make the voice of young people heard in politics. Uh, the following panelists are present via Zoom uh, up. Ms. Uh, uh, Shipra Narak Suri, uh, Chief of Urban Practice Branch UN Habitat. She's the, also the, the former co chair of the World Urban Campaign. And Mr. Evangelos. Uzunis, Head of Policy Development and Implementation Unit, the European Union Agency for Cybersecurity. His unit uh, leads a very important uh, ANISA's effort in the area of Network and Information Security Directive. Ladies and gentlemen, panel discussion is organized in the hybrid format, which means that you can also join us remotely with Zoom. Uh, in the first part of the discussion, we'll concentrate on the perspective of public policy makers. The discussion will focus on the issues such as how do we develop digitization in a way that ensures the common good and includes the values such as inclusion, human-centric approach and transparency, as well as cybersecurity. In the second part of the discussion, we'll dive deep into the perspective of cities and youth. Uh, we know that the generation of today's teenager will grow old in the digital realm. So how do we build cities to make sure they will be 
resilient uh, to digital threats of tomorrow and how do we make sure that the digital cities of the future will meet the expectations of youth dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, we live uh, in the time of digital revolution, uh, which we are not only witnessing, but most of us remain its active participants. Technology changes our lives. Innovative solutions transform almost overnight into everyday objects without which uh, we cannot imagine our existence anymore. Uh, this process is fast accelerating since the, since the pandemic broke out. And with the digital change, a big, big shift to a new type of economy is also taking shape uh, before our eyes. So the digital economy. Digital technologies are used by enterprise and public institutions, NGOs, workers, customers, and citizens. The method of production and consumption, the organization and structure of the market, the nature of work, as well as basic functions of the state and the way in which they are implemented are changing. And we can observe um, a disruption between society and technology. Technology is taking over and we need to manage for good. Uh, digital technologies do not exist in emptiness. They have an enormous potential for positive change, but they can also strengthen and enlarge the existing issues and worsen the economic, social, and other inequalities. Note the authors of the UN Secretary Report, um, Secretary General Report, uh, Roadmap for Digital Cooperation. There are also security flaws in each and every piece of digital equipment and code, which makes the digitally augmented world vulnerable and insecure. And there is also the axiological dimension. So how do we embed the values we believe in? Democracy, privacy, rule of law into the digital world, because this is the world we are now creating. The digital revolution will certainly affect the way cities are managed and thus the lives of billions of people. New smart cities of the future will be planned and built using the possibilities of AI, other modern technologies and completely new materials. And our role is to ensure that digital transformation is fair, sustainable, and non-exclusive so as not to contribute to further degradation of nature and life quality in real life. But also it is on us to make it secure in terms of ICT layer, infrastructure, hardware, software applications, as well as the privacy layer. We need to make sure that solutions for smart cities will not lead to gradual erosion of privacy. We have underlined it uh, in the values-based digital world declaration, um, which was kicked off today uh, in the morning by think tank coalitions, uh, coalition led by Kościuszko Institute. And together with young leaders from these organizations, we will make sure to implement safety measures here. Uh, in a view of the current and growing challenges faced by cities in Europe and around the world, it is necessary to strengthen the capacity of cities to plan and to plan and respond to different types of crises, including cyber and weaponization of cities in the modern warfare. Cities must adapt to changing development conditions, plan ahead, constantly evolve and be ready for unpredictable phenomena and events. The security consideration should go across the whole technology infrastructure of the ecosystem with its three layers, the edge, the core, the communication channel. And smart cities should implement the CIA triad, so confidentiality, integrity, availability, but also safety and resiliency of integrated IT and OT systems. Ladies and gentlemen, next year in June 2022, Poland will be hosting the 11th session of the World Urban Forum under the slogan Transforming Our Cities for a Better Urban Future. Poland has unique history 
of urban uh, transformation to show which may become an inspiration for other urban centers in the world. We strongly believe that the Polish experiences of economic transformation carried out with respect for environmental and social issues can become an important voice in the discussion on the future of cities. And uh, before we jump into the discussion, I would like to invite you to watch a premiere of the 11th World, World uh, Urban Forum uh, promotional film. Over half of the world's population lives in cities. While each city is unique, they face similar challenges, including pollution, the climate crisis, and the COVID-19 pandemic. The exchange of ideas to address urban challenges, such as improved housing, basic services, and green spaces is critical. The World Urban Forum, known as WUF, is the largest global gathering on sustainable urbanization. The forum is convened by UN Habitat every two years. In 2022, WUF 11 will be the city of Katowice in Poland with the theme, Transforming Our Cities for a Better Urban Future. WUF 11 in 2022 will explore solutions to make cities safer, greener and a better place to live. This is a transformation that Katowice itself has experienced. WUF 11 is organized by UN Habitat, Poland's Ministry of Development Funds and Regional Policy and the City of Katowice. We are building the cities of the future today. Join us in 2022 and be at the heart of this change. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let's jump into the discussion with the first question to Madam uh, Minister. Uh, according to the slogan of the next year's uh, World Urban Forum, cities are to be greener, smarter and more resilient to various crises and threats, including digital threats. Uh, a smart city uh, is also a synonym of accessible city, in which regardless of disabilities of, or limitations, access to services and public space is equal for everyone. So how do smart city solutions affect the availability of public goods and services for residents? Thank you very much for that question, uh, dear madam, dear speakers, uh, dear guests. First of all, I would like to thank you for uh, participate in this debate because uh, Ministry of Development Fund and Regional Policy, which I representative as organizer uh, today's panel. So um, the topic of the role of modern transformation and technologies in urban development uh, and the issue of digital treats is very important, especially in times of pandemic uh, where access to digital services is so much necessary. This issue will also be discussed among many others, of course, uh, during the 11th session of the World Urban Forum uh, hosted by Poland together with UN Habitat uh, in June next year in the same place in Katowice. Uh, in the times of climate uh, change and growing disproportions uh, between the richest and the poorest, comprehensive and innovative developments of cities, especially in their social dimension, is undoubtedly a trend both in Europe and uh, around the world. The concept of smart cities is often mistakenly um, reduced only to uh, equipping the city with uh, modern technological solution without the accompanying intelligent activities in other spheres. We have to remember that smart city is characterized by a competitive economy, sustainable use of resources, high quality uh, social capital, and intelligent public management. Local governments are becoming more and more aware to, of the uh, idea of a smart city, and they see the need to 
implement intelligent solutions. For city authorities, the solutions such as intelligent transmission networks or smart solutions in the field of urban mobility are poor saving. The same is true for residents who can live in cleaner and greener cities. Social dimensions of smart city is of particular importance. It enables local governments to implement projects based on a new innovative technologies and related to, for instance, social housing innovations, circular economy, or social participation. In this context, a smart city is also a city available to all its users. Such activities are worth supported. However, the pandemic uh, revealed to the shortcomings of cities in terms of accessibility for people with disabilities. An accessible city, smart city, should be ready to use the potential of all its inhabitants. People with disabilities or elderly uh, also are employees, clients, consumers, or tourists. So new technologies offer them a chance for better, more efficient, and often independent functioning in everyday life. So I am convinced that none of us has any doubt that the idea of smart city is not only a temporary passion and catchy slogan, but also means real solutions that bring savings, improve the quality and efficiency of city management, and the satisfaction of residents. Ladies and gentlemen, during the 11th session of the World Urban Forum in Katowice, we want the issue of smart city to be strongly emphasized. I'm sure that in June next year in Katowice, during the World Urban Forum Expo, we will see interesting technological solutions increasing the smartness of cities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for the success of the, of the forum. And uh, <laughs> Madam Minister mentioned local government responsibility and the role in um, a city's digital revolution. Uh, so our uh, next question um, will go to Mr. Maciej Stachura. How does the city of uh, Katowice operate in the uh, smart city area and what challenges are you facing? Also, if you could like present some um, examples of projects implemented in Katowice uh, in this uh, area. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, dear speakers, dear guests. Uh, as a representative of uh, Katowice City, I must say that we are proud to host IGF. And in some way, it may be also the answer to your question. Um, because in the smart city field, uh, you have to be active. Uh, so we share our experiences with other cities from all over the world. We try to learn from the best. And we also want to show what we have achieved in Katowice. And for instance, IGF or World Urban Forum, as Madam Minister mentioned, is a great platform to exchange uh, experiences. As you know, we are the capital of 2 million people metropolis. Uh, we are one of the uh, leading Polish cities in terms of smart solutions. Uh, but we are constantly unsatisfied, yes? We want to, we want more every day. Uh, we want to change. We want to achieve more and more. And our goal is to implement smart solutions is in as many areas as we can. Because uh, when you are governing a town, a city, you cannot implement smart solutions only in one or two fields. Because in the nearest future, you won't be competitive. Uh, especially in the terms of attracting new investors or new inhabitants. Uh, 
Uh, you asked about challenges. Uh, I see uh, two biggest challenges. Uh, first is obvious, it's, it's money, yes? Uh, you can always borrow money, so you can find money. Uh, but the point is uh, to change uh, thinking about money. You have to start thinking um, about money in terms of uh, new technologies, like investing money, not spending money, yes? And uh, because when you invest money uh, in smart solutions, you are going to gain from it. And for instance, by reducing uh, costs. And the second challenge, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's the most important because uh, as a city, we are not a private company in terms of spending public money. Uh, every time we spend money uh, in the field of new technologies, our citizens are asking, uh, why are you doing this? What are we going to benefit from it, yes? And with each new project, uh, we have to ensure our citizens and that it will be good for them, yes? And that it will bring some benefits for them. And uh, when the new technology succeeds, you know, it's fine, yes? Everyone is happy. But uh, as we all know, sometimes new projects, new solutions fail, yes? And uh, it's very difficult for, uh, for each city because we have to face public opinion. Sometimes we also uh, face uh, accusations yes, of losing public money. I'm telling this uh, because uh, we cannot be afraid. Yes, We have to uh, persuade our citizens that sometimes uh, we can make mistakes, that sometimes new ambitious projects can fail. Yes, it's, it's very important because uh, as you know, sometimes it's not, uh, not easy to deal with public opinion, but we have to win people, yes, uh, to uh, make some changes. So it's important to remember about it. And you also asked uh, about uh, some example of uh, smart uh, solutions in Katowice. So I would say a few words about public safety. Five years ago, we implemented in Katowice video surveillance system called Kismia. And uh, Kismia was the first intelligent system on such a scale uh, in Poland. Today, Kismia collects uh, data from almost 300 uh, cameras. And thanks to artificial intelligence solutions, system automatically detects uh, situations like car collisions, like street fights, like people lying on the ground. Uh, or it also recognizes cars by their registration numbers. And when system detects dangerous situations, uh, it uh, displays the situation on the screen and CCTV operators uh, can make a decision what to do about it. So for instance, in this way, we don't need to employ 20 people to observe uh, 300 cameras. We just need two or three of them. Uh, so uh, in this, this is example that shows us that smart technologies uh, really help us to manage our resources wisely. Because uh, every city in the whole world, everybody wants to have more resources, more money, more employees, more tools. Yes, but with smart, uh, with smart technologies, you manage resources you have uh, wisely. And uh, every year we add new cameras to the system, and the crime rate has dropped. Uh, which is very important because we have to show effects to our citizens and uh, effectiveness of uh, our uh, Kismia prompted us to develop a better system. It would be called Kismia uh, 2.0. Uh, we will combine city monitoring uh, with, uh, let's say, environmental issues. Uh, the new system would collect uh, much more data and thanks to big data, yes, we would be able not only to react in certain situations, we would be able to predict them. Uh, for instance, uh, to predict the air quality or to predict the risk of a threat of river overflow. Uh, so to sum it up, uh, you know, living in a city means living with smart solutions. And it's not a question whether we want to implement it. It's a question, uh, how fast should we do it? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I would paraphrase that with smart cities come um, great uh, responsibilities. And with that, I hope that uh, Ms. Shipra Narak Suri is uh, here with us online. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, and we can see you. 
uh, welcome. Uh, I would like to ask uh, a question on what uh, transformative potential can digital technologies have for sustainable urban development, which we are witnessing now and which will only accelerate, madam. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Moderator. Thank you, uh, Minister. It's great to see you again, Kaisha. Uh, colleagues from Katowice, it's really, uh, really my honor to be here. Um, as, as you know, I come from UN Habitat. And um, for us, uh, really, the whole smart city discourse has uh, is about putting people at the center. And that's very, very important. I think the generations, the three or four generations of of the smart city paradigm that have come and now we are really coming uh, and talking about putting people at the center. We know digital technologies have the potential to serve people. We just heard from, uh, from both the minister and the, and the representative of Katowice. Uh, we know digital technologies can improve public services, working conditions. We know that they, they can enhance um, uh, participation and inclusion. We know that they, they can improve revenue collection, improve transparency and accountability in cities. But we have also seen, and particularly at this time in the last couple of years, that uh, digital divides remain around the world, that the digital revolution must be directed and governed in an inclusive and democratic and transparent way. What you were saying in your, in your opening remarks as well. So, for us, if cities are to embrace innovation and technology, inclusion and human rights must be at the heart of that process and that outcome. We know COVID has shown us that unequally applied and unequally accessible digital technologies can actually do more damage than they can have benefits. They can reinforce spatial and socioeconomic differences. A child who has access to education over the internet has access to remote learning, is in a very different place from a child who does not, who, who does not even own a device or who, who cannot access education or healthcare without being physically present because digital, half of the world is still not connected uh, digitally. So that's one part of the story. Um, on, on, on a second part, um, for us, it's very, very important that um, that we talk about, um, we, as I said, we, we center the whole smart city discourse around people. We make access to technology equitable. We learn to responsibly manage data and digital infrastructure. We build trust by securing, uh, putting, uh, securing digital assets. Um, and then we build multi-stakeholder capacity to actually build and execute smart city projects. I want to push on one point on governance, which I just heard uh, from Katowice. And this is, this is extremely, extremely important for us when you talk about cybersecurity and leveraging cybersecurity. Indeed, AI has very many applications, predicting disasters, predicting crises, predicting air quality challenges, the next flood, the next heat wave, and allowing people to prepare for it. But CCTV and AI-enabled predictive policing also has some very, very serious challenges. We have seen that happen. It, it presents some very serious human rights risks. So when you say, you know, it's not about um, doing it or not, it's about how, how fast we do it. I think it's really about how fast we can put safeguards uh, to apply uh, a technology-driven approach in an effective manner. And the Human Rights Commissioner, UN Human Rights Commissioner said last month, AI technologies can have negative or even catastrophic effects if they are used without sufficient regard um, to how they affect people's human rights. So I think it's important that we use technology, but we use it in a way that is just, that is fair, that is transparent, and that is not, um, that does not, um, uh, exacerbate digital divides and does not exacerbate the potential uh, for violation of human rights. That to us is absolutely fundamental in this discussion around transforming cities uh, through uh, a digital or a smart city-based approach. Uh, thank you. And additional question, because you uh, touched that point, the crisis 
management. So uh, the digitization in, in cities allows for, allow, allows for more economical management of uh, resources and more effective management of uh, information and thus uh, inter alia increasing security in the uh, face of crisis situations, helping uh, in the crisis management. Uh, this is in accordance with the implementation of the sustainable development goals. How do you uh, assess the involvement of uh, cities in this area based on the experience from the declaration actions in Abu Dhabi, uh, Abu Dhabi in 2022, action plan for cities uh, proposed as part of uh, a World Urban uh, Forum, uh, the 11th edition heritage. Thank you. Um, I think it's very important to understand that more and more cities are, of course, using data of different kinds, including crowdsourced data, including um, including um, big data, uh, including qualitative and quantitative data to um, inform their policy making. This is something that we emphasized very much in the in the Abu Dhabi declared actions. And as the minister was saying, we're hoping that this discussion on evidence-based policy making, smart evidence-based policy making is also something that we will bring to the World Urban Forum uh, in, in, um, in Katowice. Cities are using data um, uh, to through um, the, the voluntary local reviews, they're using the opportunities that are presented uh, in the international fora to report on their sustainable development goals and on their progress towards sustainable development goals. They're also using data as, as uh, we just heard also from Katowice, but many cities around the world to predict um, the impacts of climate change and to prepare for those. Uh, they're also using data um, to enhance the safety and security of public spaces, for example, or of transport infrastructure. And we just heard around, around road accidents. So there are all of those opportunities um, to, for cities to, um, to enhance their policy making through data and through technology. And we hope that many of these examples will come to, um, uh, to the World Urban Forum. But I think there are two things here that, that are very important. First, that, that local governments don't uh, often, cities don't think of themselves as technology organizations. But the amount of data that they are managing, they need to start thinking of themselves as tech, tech organizations or tech providers, and therefore put in place the, the security measures that are needed to protect the technological system and to create and share and maintain large quantities of data securely. That's very important, and I think that should definitely make its way uh, into into the discussion in in the World Urban Forum and into the follow up from the from the Katowice Forum. All of today's networks are constantly being probed for vulnerabilities and and weaknesses, and and local governments also have a responsibility to make sure that their networks are secure and that their data is is secure. That's very important. So I would. I would put that as a key element, really, in terms of dealing, uh, building resilience, and in terms of dealing with uh, with um, uh, data and cybersecurity issues. Thank you so much. And with that, uh, uh, I would like to turn to uh, Mr. Kamil Vyshkovsky to uh, dive deeper into the topic of artificial intelligence. So how uh, can artificial intelligence and um, technologies reduce the energy uh, intensity of cities in the context of climate uh, crisis, which, which was which was also mentioned uh, previously. Uh, predictions um, says uh, that cities um, that leverage smart city solutions can improve their energy efficient efficiency by thirty percent in twenty years. And th th that's true. Um, even forty, uh, when we will take uh, take into the into in, into the look uh, data from uh, from United States. Uh, by the way, uh, not only um, European Green Deal could be uh, useful in that uh, on that context, but also uh, American one, Joe, Joe Biden plan especially. Uh, just to, to to show you, based on that example where we are, um, U.S. economy is is based on, uh, on on not only coal but also oil. Um, uh, what we have uh, in uh, United States, we have a um, climate industrial revolution, definitely. 
Uh, the plan is uh, simple to to move from where US is, is just right now into the, the new model. Under the new model before 2035, we could have and we should have in, in US 40% of energy from, uh, from wind, uh, around 35% from solar, 11 to 13% from nuclear energy and the rest from the traditional sources. Um, US government is including into, into that um, data uh, artificial intelligence is as an important factor because uh, most of the cities are, um, are, are are planning to implement technology to be able to to, to save as much as is possible uh, of, of of energy which which simply they are consuming. How much uh, cities in the United States are consuming? Extremely extremely high level, around eighty percent. Uh, when we are comparing to the rest of the world, uh, just to remind to everyone, we have fifty percent of the population lives in cities. Uh, cities are covering 3% of land and cities are consuming 60 to 80% of energy in countries like US, 80. Why? Because this country is so well developed. And of course, um, in, um, in American cities, people love to consume ex enormous amounts of, of energy. So when we are comparing uh, US with Europe, so in Europe, situation is a bit better. So we are consuming less in cities, but still around 70%. When we are moving into, to, into the South, let's say, take a look on Africa, uh, here we have wonderful data from International um, in, in, in Energy Agency. Uh, cities are below 60%. Uh, so, and of course, everywhere artificial intelligence could be could be helpful if we will uh, be able to implement uh, uh, what we already have. As you mentioned, we 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 will have as a result 30% of of of, uh, of of reduction. And um, and and in addition to that, but it's also good to to discuss maybe later. Um, cybersecurity in cities, because of course, artificial intelligence is artificial intelligence is useful, but we have also some potential global threats. So the precise the, the, this or that city could be attacked by from the outside world simply uh, and and uh, paralyzed uh, if uh, their um, uh, systems, especially um, based on artificial intelligence, are not well protected. Uh, so of course we have some pluses, and of course we have a lot of minuses, especially when we are taking into account. Uh, uh, some some global threats related to the new models of war, uh, which we are of course observing around us. Excellent, uh, thank you. And uh, uh, cybersecurity topic was mentioned at least two times today, or even three. So I will start a round of uh, the cybersec questions with a question to uh, Mr. Uh, Evangelos Uzunis. Uh, sir, are you here with us online? Yes, I am. Great. Good afternoon. Happy happy to see you uh, good afternoon um, so what are the cybersecurity threats and uh, challenges impacting the evolution of smart cities uh, one was mentioned already by uh, Kamil Wyszkowski uh, we know that they are complex and more and more sophisticated so over to you so thank you good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, madam minister dear organizers it's a pleasure to be today with you apologies i couldn't make it you know to katowice a very nice beloved city hopefully next time um, indeed uh, smart cities without proper digitalization is not possible and uh, i would fully agree both with uh, the minister and uh, with a representative from the city of katowice that this is definitely an investment and not a cost and by investing in new technologies, obviously you open up the Pandora's box, you know, to cybersecurity challenges and threats. And um, also you have to consider uh, how all these investments are going to play out with uh, existing legacy applications, which are uh, numerous in a, in a big city, integrating uh, old technologies with new technologies and offering, you know, value added uh, services. Cybersecurity definitely is going to affect all of us, and especially in big cities of millions of citizens, um, it's a, it can be a big disaster. It affects, you know, the way that we go to work, the way that we, the, the mass media operate, the traffic lights, you know, and other important uh, systems. So I will say that there are a, a couple of important uh, things to do. Definitely one thing is to accept that you are vulnerable and you have to develop a plan to mitigate a cyber crisis. As we advise, you know, the 
member states, the states to do. I will also advise cities to develop a strategy, a cybersecurity strategy that will help them, you know, to develop the appropriate skills, the appropriate strategies, the appropriate mechanisms. The second thing that I will recommend is to do a proper risk assessment to identify where the possible threats, where the possible risks might pop up when they embark into this important, you know, journey. And uh, by doing a proper risk assessment, they can already prioritize what needs to be done today, tomorrow, or in the coming, you know, years. It is important to assume that one day you are going to be affected and uh, you have to have the appropriate capability to respond to a crisis. So what we recommend uh, to member states, I will also recommend this to the city to have an incident response team, a, a team that is able to respond to a crisis, uh, to deal with something like an emergency. Most of these systems are basically owned by the private sector nowadays, and uh, they are the asset owners, and you have to collaborate with them. And uh, you need definitely a legal framework to do that. So it's important that, uh, you know, at national level or even at regional level, that there is this cooperation, both at legal level, but also at the trust level. So these players have to know each other. They need to meet regularly. They need to share information and understand each other so that you, they, they know how to act during a, during a crisis. Sometimes, uh, you know, we fail because uh, it take, we spend a lot of time trying to understand who, who is who and who does what. So having a dialogue with the private sector is absolutely important. And um, closing, I will say that we have to pay a lot of attention to legacy systems. A lot of these systems might be very old. By bringing these systems, you know, online, we expose ourselves, you know, to important vulnerabilities. These systems, these old systems have not been developed with cybersecurity in mind. They are not very protected. The technologies that they use are not, you know, internet based. So if you bring them in a, in a challenging environment like the internet, uh, they are very, very vulnerable. So you have to pay a lot of attention, you know, to this cyber physical phenomena. And to find people that understand the cyber physical phenomena, so how a cyber attack can lead into a physical disaster, I can tell you is not easy. And uh, you cannot find a lot of experts. And if you find these experts, maybe a city might not have the money to uh, enroll them, you know, because they are so expensive. So you have to play uh, with, uh, with a lack of, of skills, with a lack of uh, talents available because of the huge demand that exists at the moment, you know, in this field. I don't want to be exhaustive in my contribution, uh, knowing that others would like to take the, you know, the, the token and speak. I will close my introduction at this stage and say that uh, it cannot, we cannot proceed in a smart city without having a proper cybersecurity plan or a, or a system or a strategy in place. Thank you and back to you. Dear moderator. Thank you. And in terms of uh, uh, those strategies, uh, I would like to um, uh, come back to Madam uh, Minister. Um, we spoke about the, uh, the the public goods and services. Uh, they should be available for all and for the all time. Um, so they need to be uh, cyber secure. We've heard um, and witness some unprecedented uh, cyber attacks on local governments uh, and cities in Poland and, and, and around the world. So um, uh, following the recommendation of Mr. Uzunis, uh, how is the issue of digitization and cybersecurity included in strategic documents uh, on urban development in Poland? Thank you very much. Uh, as we heard that uh, digitalization is one of the most important challenges uh, for nations and cities in the near future. Uh, the necessity of fast digitalization, um, trans digital transformation uh, of uh, municipalities uh, also results from social um, expectation. Uh, because uh, improvement of um, uh, living condition, uh, speed and easy of uh, dealing uh, with administrative matters. Uh, the COVID pandemic uh, has shown that um, uh, 
convenient access to public services without leaving home is very important for us. Uh, so uh, the importance of urban development um, has been emphasized in the national urban policy, a strategy that is uh, uh, that is uh, currently being updated in Poland. Uh, digitalization as a major cross-sector trend uh, affects all dimensions of sustainable urban development. Uh, therefore, it should be carried out to ensure the common goods uh, on the basis of uh, values such as uh, social inclusion, focus on people and transparency. Mm. The national urban policy uh, assumes uh, the improvement of the level of digitalization of local governments. It's necessary to create good conditions uh, for the digitalization of local governments. In particular, there is a um, uh, need for stability, greater uh, clarity and simplification of uh, legal reg regulations. In the national urban policy, we also pay attention uh, to processing and opening uh, for public data in order to increase the um, participation of citizens in co-deciding on public um, affairs. Activities is um, this area. Um, activities in this area uh, should focus on um, improving the quality. Uh, uh, of collected and shared public uh, data and on ensuring their safe storage. Together with the development of digital competences of city, I think that IT security must be ensured. In this uh, aspect, it's necessary to unify the um, approach to cybersecurity at the national level. Um, in 2018, the Act on the National Security um, se um, National Cyber Security System entered into force, uh, which impl implements into the Polish legal system the Network and Infor Information System Direct. It was the first European law in the field of cyber security. We also elaborated the cybersecurity strategy of the Republic of Poland for 2019 to 2024. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Wyszkowski, would you like to add uh, something to um, the ideas on how to improve uh, services for uh, residents in terms of banking, healthcare, and ensuring the right level of uh, security? Probably one minute. Yeah, I noticed that we, we don't have much time, so very briefly. But but, but let me comment first. Uh, what what we what we still have uh, uh, not solved at all um, in uh, cybersecurity uh, sector. Let me come back to the famous uh, famous national national chamber of uh, of control a report from 2015, where uh, in in the context of cities we we, we get a lot of. Uh, uh, recommendations that simply cities should be much, much better um, They protect their uh, critical infrastructure. And here, uh, you know, the progress is very, very small. Uh, for instance, are not protected at all. Uh, water distribution system, uh, 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 traffic lights, uh, system of distribution of heat, especially um, such uh, important elements like uh, uh, proper cooperation between cities when one one city will be hit by, uh, by 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 cyber attacks so th that 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 thing should, still should be solved here by the way the government uh, is acting very actively so we have a new uh, strategy implemented by the government of Poland uh, last year uh, together with 12 other other european countries where um, the, the european institutions simply um, uh, also, uh, also define that, uh, that, that, that some progress is is, uh, is is visible. So that's a, a positive element here. But coming back to the services you mentioned, of course, um, they are crucial for, for for citizens, especially they are providing very sensitive data uh, when we are talking about the uh, health sector, for instance. So so uh, all this data should be properly protected. And again, here uh, the system is not. Uh, 
effective and transparent enough. Uh, let's take a, a, a concrete example when we are going to the dentist. Uh, the question is this, if this private company is uh, protecting your data properly, especially when you are providing uh, very sensitive information that you are, for instance, uh, uh, HIV positive. Of course not. And that's a problem we have to solve. And this is a, an example between the public sector and private sector, uh, very well uh, showing how uh, important is that aspect and how many things we should uh, address here. Uh, also in the context of this, uh, let's say, uh, old enough uh, uh, control from, from National Chamber of, of Control in Poland from, from 2015. Very good document. It's, it's really good to, to come back to, 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 to this paper and to take a look seriously on recommendations. Uh, thank you uh, for your contribution. And so let's move to the second part uh, of the discussion with the first question to uh, Mr. Andrew Roberts. Uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic introduced even um, a greater urgency for a local and national governments alike to bridge the growing uh, digital divide, especially for uh, marginalized uh, groups. And uh, how should local and government administration build more uh, efficient and secure data management systems, uh, which we mentioned already, and protect citizens' privacy when using digital services. These uh, activities are the foundation for inclusive and resilient um, smart cities. So over to you and Estonian experience. Yeah, thank you for the question. And in the uh, interest of time, I'll try to be brief. Um, so I'd probably suggest kind of um, two main ideas. So the uh, case study of uh, COVID is actually quite a nice one um, in the fact that governments uh, needed to procure a digital solution um, that tried to understand the health outcomes of citizens in order to uh, prevent the kind of growing infection, um, but also ensuring the fundamental privacy and the rights of the citizen. Um, so what we saw is the procurement of a digital solution that at the heart of it needed um, privacy engineering, privacy by design, as well as fundamental pr principles of security engineering, security by design. So for instance, in the Estonian case, um, the COVID uh, tracing application was a consortium of uh, digital partners. At its heart though, was a um, partner which had long, ex long experience with privacy engineering and development of cryptographic solutions. Our COVID uh, uh, certification uh, solution was developed by a company with a long experience of, um, of blockchain uh, KSI solutions. So I, I think we should take this as an example and as the representative from Katowice says, and to piggyback on the last uh, answer, when we're developing solutions like uh, AI cameras that are using AI and um, whether it's essential services, we should take a pause and when we do that procurement process, uh, look at um, privacy engineering or incorporate privacy engineering and security engineering. I'd say briefly, the second one, uh, in Estonia, we have our um, secure, secure data exchange platform on a national level, um, which we use to, uh, which we use for e-government services. So our citizens using services with government departments so that is an open API. Um, it is managed by uh, the Nordic Interop Interoperability Institute. Um, so if you're offering a service to citizens, uh, so if you're energy and you're a smart grid, or if you're a mobility as a service uh, organization, you can actually uh, use and develop and uh, work with that Nordic Institute and uh, trial that open API so that you have you know, a solution that allows some secure data exchange and a a protocol which is developed with those cryptographic standards. So these are the kind of two different solutions that I think um, smart cities can incorporate. Uh, thank you for this uh, practical um, advice. Um, I would like to turn over to Ms. Katarzyna uh, Smentek uh, and ask you about the digital uh, divide and uh, dive deep into that. The Youth uh, Council at 11th World Urban Forum has the task uh, of involving um, young people to a greater extent in the discussion on uh, urban development. Uh, it is believed that uh, young people are born with uh, 
a cell uh, in hand. It turns out that even in this age group, uh, the level of digital competences is varied. So how do you assess the digital competences of young people and how we can increase them? Thank you very much. And um, when we think about young people, I think in general we think, oh, they are probably checking Facebook or Messenger or WhatsApp or any other um, social media account. And um, very often it's true. So a lot of young people really have competences, very high competences, digital competences. But um, there are also, there is a huge portion of young people that unfortunately doesn't have access to uh, either digital world, as we can call it, or IT technology in general. So when we think about young people, I would like to firstly focus on young people that have access um, to technology. So for example, in case of Poland, um, it is believed that um, majority of people, so more than 90% of young people, um, everyone has at least one account on at least one uh, social media profile, uh, which means that one of us uh, probably has more than one account. Um, and of course, uh, from this basic experience, from this basic competences, of course, um, they are very high. So when we think about, um, for example, using social media, using internet, using that for education or work, um, I think it's very uh, also unusual in other, uh, in case of other age groups. So as young people, we really have the opportunities and really have this capacity um, to use the internet to the greatest extent. So for example, our parents, grandparents didn't have this chance um, to explore the internet as we do now. Um, but then uh, when we think about young people, I think that we wrongly think about, for example, TikTok and Facebook, as I mentioned in the beginning. So when we think young people, we think only about this um, entertainment and leisure um, exercises in, digi in digital world. But whereas um, re in reality, young people are also focusing mostly on scientific environment. So um, we are the group that uh, uses the internet for education. We are the group that uh, went fully remote uh, once the pandemic started. Um, we are the group that also are digital nomads. So very often we are not based in offices. We are not based um, in, uh, in companies' buildings, but we can actually work independently from anywhere in the world just using our computer or smartphones. Um, but then we should also remember about the groups that don't have access to the internet. So uh, how can we make actually um, the internet available? Yeah, how um, government to, can also support? Yeah, so in case of the governments, I think it's very important, for example, in the European Union, we think that uh, we are one of the most developed uh, regions of the world, and of course we are, uh, but then we have funds, uh, for example, cohesion funds, that can make um, young people... Um, more closer to the internet, more closer um, to technology itself. Uh, so how we can actually make this just transition of the internet a reality. So when we are talking about just transition in case of climate and energy, um, we are talking about like making this uh, loop from one place to another. In case of technology, it's the same. So how we can, starting from a very bottom, how we can move forward very, very fast. Um, of course, I'm very happy that um, the, the case of risk and issues and various threats has been mentioned by uh, several speakers already. Um, because when we are talking about young people and um, access to the internet or not, um, and how fast can we make it, uh, it's all, of course also about uh, security and safety of young people. So how many young people have been bullied uh, online? Um, it is believed, and the data shows that, that more than 80% of young people have been bullied, have faced some security issues online. So how can prepare them? Of course, by education. So when we are talking about IT education, it's not only about about, uh, teaching young kids how to use the internet, how to use the computer, but it's also about teaching them how to be safe in the internet. And it's also about the government and various uh, international institutions to prepare young people for these various challenges. Uh, I uh, can see that uh, Kamil Byszkowski would like to jump in. Yeah, but, uh, can I ask what, what, you yeah. for a really list? Yeah, uh, very, very quickly, one, just one, one more thing uh, in, in the context of what Kasia just, just said. Uh, we have global inequalities uh, related to, to, to access to, to, to the internet. Just to uh, remind you that we have 4.9 pe billion people online and 2.9 offline. So 40% 40, 40 of global population is without any access to, uh, to internet. And that's something we, 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 have to, we have to solve. One thing, uh, so taking into account that currently like youth population is the biggest one in history. So 50%, more than 50% of the young people, of people in the world are youth, um, is also how to make this divide 
smaller and smaller and how to make this transition even faster. Uh, thank you. And with this uh, short spoiler, I would say, uh, to World Urban Forum, I would like to ask Madam Minister uh, to uh, invite <laughs> our guest to the next edition. Yes, so. uh, I would like to thank you all to participating in our panel today. And once again, I would like to invite you very warmly to take part at the 11th session of the World Urban Forum in June next year, here in the same place in Katowice. So I hope so that we will see in Katowice from 26th to 30th of June in 2022. See you in Katowice. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh to my panelists here on site in and off, uh, online. Um, ladies and gentlemen, so we need to win uh, people to join the urban digital revolution, which should be made as much inclusive as possible and uh, secure in the whole value chain to not, not ask ourselves um, the question, is this the really the new world we have uh, created? So with that, uh, thank you very much and uh, have a great rest of the day in uh, Katowice. Thank you.